ecosystem is a living community which depends on each member and its surrounding environment. The living part of an ecosystem is sometimes called a food chain. Every participant in an ecosystem has an important part to play. And if one becomes more dominant than the others, the ecosystem can develop problems. Hi there boys and girls, you're watching ITTV. Well, today we have a very new chapter. What is it? It's all about food chain and food web. So let's begin today's lesson, understanding the food chain. So, tell me, between plants, animals and humans, who can actually make their own food? Well, it's plants, obviously. All plants can actually produce their own food. So what about humans and animals? Humans and animals actually depend on plants as producers. So, first of all, we're going to learn about the classification or the classes of animals that we have according to the sources of food that they consume. So let's begin firstly with the herbivores. What are they? Let's have a look at the graphic. Herbivores, they are animals that eat plant. So once you remember the word herb, it actually refers to something regarding the vegetables. So herbivores are all animals that actually consume plants. Now here is another two example of animals which are herbivores, goats and caterpillars. See how they only eat grass and leaves? These groups of animals eat different parts of plants like honey, leaves, seeds, fruits, stems, roots or other parts of plants. So herbivores actually consume different parts of the plants including the stem, leaves, honey and so on. So let's have a look at the example of animals and which part of the plants do they actually consume. Let's start with the butterflies. Well, butterflies, which are herbivores and a kind of insect, actually eat honey. The garden snails eat stems and leaves. Rabbit and squirrel eat vegetables and nuts. But obviously, these squirrels are always related to nuts. Elephants, the largest mammal living on land, actually eat stems. They, although they are the largest mammal, only eat vegetables and they are obviously herbivores. Most of the herbivores are eaten by omnivores and carnivores. So, the herbivores, what do they actually have in them, an additional feature, so that they can actually escape from the omnivores and carnivores? These herbivores, although they are quite small animals, actually have got a very strong sense of hearing. Why is that so? They need this sense of hearing so that they can actually notice the approach of omnivores or carnivores who are actually coming to attack them. So, remember, all herbivores have got good sense of hearing hearing to actually find whether the predator is close by. So this was about herbivores. What about carnivores? What are they actually? You know now that carnivores actually feed on herbivores. Let's have a look. Carnivores are actually animals that eat other animals. The examples of carnivores are firstly the lion and the eagle. Now. Did you know or did you know that the eagle are actually carnivores? That is because the eagles usually consume what? Rats and rabbits. Another example of carnivore are the tigers and the lizards as well. The sharks, although they are known as fishes, they are also very dangerous carnivores. What do sharks actually feed on? On seals. Let's see further. And crabs. Crabs are also carnivores. Now the tiger, what other feature do they actually have? They have got sharp feet, strong feet and sharp claws. Now why is that so? So that they can attack their prey easily and tear them apart and eat their prey. Now this is features of tigers. Now all carnivores have got very good sense of hearing, sense of smell and sense of sight. 
all three organs are functioning very well. This is so they can actually attack their prey easily. Now let's see further of other features on other carnivores which actually help them to hunt down their prey. Here is a picture of frogs. Now frogs they have got eyes which stick out and long sticky tongue. Now the long sticky tongue is actually used to grab on any insects like the flies and they are sticky so that the insects actually stick on their tongue. Now they have got eyes on top of their head on, on the side as you can see in the picture. This is so that they have a clear vision of things around them. Now you should know what are frogs actually? They are actually types of amphibians. They live both on land and water. Let's see further. Next we have the eagle. Now the eagle have got strong and muscular feet, sharp claws and beak. Now the eagle and the tiger have got something in common. What is that? Strong feet and sharp claws. So these were examples or additional features of carnivores like eagle, frogs and tiger. This is how they actually survive. Now let's see further. Now did you know that the Venus flytrap is a well-known carnivorous plant? So plants, they actually make their own food. They are actually producers in the food chain. Remember that the food chain is something to do with producers and consumers. Consumers are actually animals and us humans. Later we would learn further about the food chain. Now back to the Venus flytrap. Now the Venus flytrap is known as a carnivorous plant. Why so? Because let's say any insect lands in the Venus flytrap like in the picture they quickly shut down and start digesting that insect. Now they consume insects so this is the reason why they are known as carnivorous plants. So far in the lesson, children, we have learned about what? Herbivores and carnivores. Now, what other classification of animals according to the food that they eat that you actually know of? Now, let's learn further about omnivores. What are they and what do they actually consume? Let's have a look at the graphic. Omnivores, animals which feed on both animals and plants. So let's recall, herbivores eat only plants, carnivores eat only animals and lastly omnivores, they consume both animals and plants. For example, let's take the turtle. The turtle eat plankton and shrimps. Next we have the bears. Now the bears eat honey, fruits and fish. Now my question to you, how do the bears actually protect themselves when they eat the honey? Because the bees are obviously going to sting the bears. This is achieved by having thick fur. So now you have an idea why bears actually have got thick fur. Now let's see further of another example of an omnivore. Now the dirty cockroaches that you find around, laying around your houses or outside in the shops, also are omnivores. Now let's see the next example. Birds. Birds are also a type of omnivore. That's because birds eat seed and insects. Now let's have a look at the last example of omnivore. Chickens feed on worms, grass and insects. So chickens are also a type of omnivore. So this was the three main classes of animals. Firstly herbivore, secondly carnivore and next omnivore. So it is important that you know what do they actually consume to survive. Now next we are going to learn all about food chain. So in the food chain you have to know what are producers. Now, I've told you earlier in the lesson that producers can actually make their own food. Now, among animals, plants and humans, only plants can make their own food with the help of sunlight in the process called photosynthesis. So obviously, plants are the producers. Now let's have a look at the next graphic. Green plants are producers because they make their own food through photosynthesis. Now, remember that they actually use what for photosynthesis? Sunlight, water and carbon dioxide. And the product of photosynthesis is oxygen to be used by animals and human and glucose to be stored in the plant. Now let's see further. What is the definition of food chain? A relationship between the producers 
and consumers is known as food chain. Now you can see the picture in this slide. Now the producer in this picture is flower and the consumers are the caterpillars, frogs, snakes and owls. So this is the food chain. The food chain is a relationship between producers and the consumers. Now in year 5 all you have to know about the food chain is that they actually consume of producers and consumers. As you go further in your secondary school you would learn that the consumers can be divided into primary consumer, secondary consumer and tertiary consumer. So Regarding the food chain and the food web, it doesn't end here. The journey continues. So let me tell you something that the producers, which are the plants, actually absorb energy or light from where? From the sunlight. So the full energy for the plants is taken from the sunlight. Thus, the energy is then transferred from the producer, the plants, to the consumers, which are the animals. Let's see further in the graphic. The food chain always starts with the green plants. The green plants is eaten by the herbivores. Why is that so? That's because herbivores are actually plant-eating animals. So from producers, we go straight to herbivores. Let's see further what happens to these herbivores. The herbivores are eaten by carnivores and omnivores. So carnivores, herbivores and omnivores, they are all known as consumers. But Herbivores are eaten by carnivores and omnivores because carnivores and omnivores are actually animal eating animal. So now you have an idea why earlier in the lesson we actually learned about herbivores, carnivores and omnivores. If you did not know regarding them and their definition, this food chain would be a bit difficult for you to understand. Now let's see further what else we have regarding the food chain. Now, this is an example of food chain. Firstly, the sun. Now, I have told you that the sun is where the producers, the plants, get the energy from. And the arrow shown in the food chain is actually resembling that eaten by or energy flow. You can see in this food chain, let's see once again, that the sun gives its energy and the leaves or the plant make their own food by photosynthesis. Then later the leaves are consumed by slugs and these slugs being herbivore are eaten by frogs which are carnivores and later the frog is consumed by heron. Now heron is a type of bird. This is an example of food chain. Now remember once again that the arrow resembles eaten by or energy flow. Now this is an example of food chain. Let's see another example of a different food chain. Now another example of food chain for you. As you can see, the sun giving its energy and plants produces food by photosynthesis. Now these grass is then consumed by grasshoppers and grasshoppers are eaten by frogs and frogs are eaten by snake and lastly the snake is eaten by the great eagle. So this is all a cycle and lastly after the eagle what happens if the eagle dies? They are actually decomposed. What are examples of decomposers? Fungi, bacteria, the hyenas and the vultures. They are all decomposers who actually change all the large substances into absorbable substances in the soil like nitrogen to nitrates. So this is an example of the food chain. Now from the beginning of the lesson we have learned about classes of animals, herbivores, carnivores and omnivores and we have learned that the food chain is actually the relationship between producers which are the plants and consumers which are animals and us humans. Now let's move further to the exercise of the day and let's see what I have in store for you in question one. Question 1. What is the possible organism for R in the food chain? Now let's have a look. The food chain starts with the producers as usual, the grass. And then the grasshopper is eaten by what? R. So what can actually be R? R is something that consumes grasshopper. And lastly, R is eaten by the snake. Now let's have a look at the answer option. In place A, we have honey, followed by B, elephant, then C, frog, 
and lastly D zebra so grasshopper they are actually herbivores so which of the following option of answer are animals which consume herbivores they have to be carnivores or omnivores let's have a look at the correct answer now the correct answer is C frog the grass is eaten by the grasshopper and the grasshopper is eaten by the carnivore which is the frog and lastly the frog is consumed by the snake now I'm sure this was a simple food chain for you let's see further about question 2 question 2 this animal lives in the forest it has strong feet and sharp claws the possible animal is a rabbit B lion C snake and lastly D giraffe now strong feet and sharp claw living in the forest these are the tips for you in this question now what class of animal actually have got strong feet and sharp claw obviously the carnivores so all you have to decide in this question is which option of answer or which animal in the option of answer is actually a carnivore now let's see the correct answer the correct answer is B lion lion lives in the forest and has got strong feet and sharp claws now which other carnivores have got sharp claws the eagles of course now let's move further to question 3 which of the following is an omnivore firstly let's define omnivore omnivore are animals that eat animals and other plants so let's have a look at the answer option a eagle b cow c birds and lastly d squirrel which of the follow do you think children are actually a type of omnivore let's see the answer the answer is c birds now a eagle it's wrong because eagle is actually carnivore and cow and squirrels are example of herbivores now let's move further to question four Question 4. Below is the food chain in the forest. Grass eaten by deer and lastly deer consumed by tiger. So grass is producer, deer is actually the herbivore and tiger is the carnivore which eats the herbivore, the deer. Now the question is, if the deers are killed, which of the following organism will increase in population? Now let's imagine what happens if the deers are killed and go under extinction. What happens to the grass and what happens to the tiger? The deer eats the grass but the tiger eats the deer. Now put a quick calculation in your mind and see what is the correct answer. Now the correct answer is grass. Now grass is increases in population. Why is that so? Because the deers are extinct or killed so they don't consume grass. But what happens to the tiger? Now the tiger lose a source of food which is the deer. So the tiger's population would decrease. Now you have an idea how the food chain actually flows and what happens to the balance in the food chain if one of the animal is extinct or killed. Now let's see the next question. Question 5. Which of the following is an example of animals which consume only plants? A. Elephant B. Bear C. Wolf D. Rat Now, consuming only plants, they are actually herbivores. Now, I'm sure you have an idea of what the correct answer is actually. Let's see anyway. The correct answer is A. Elephant. Now, elephants are examples of herbivore. Now, I'm sure that you could answer all the questions correctly in today's lesson. I'm sure you came by a few difficult words. So, let's see what do these words actually stand for in the vocabulary of the day. Vocabulary of the day. Consumer. Panguna. Chain Rantai Makanan Hunting Mamburu And 
lastly producer pengeluwa which are actually the plants So let's move over to the triwear segment to learn something interesting for the day. Let's see. What does a spider use its web for? About half of all spiders spin webs and they do this in order to catch prey. Spiders can tell when an insect has trapped itself in their web because they have special sensors in their bodies that pick up the vibration of the insect. Once caught in a web, an insect is not able to escape because the threads are sticky. When it feels the vibration of an insect, the spider runs over to it and injects her venom. It then wraps it in silk and eats it straight away or keeps it hanging on the web to eat later. Now, you have an idea of how the spider actually consumes their prey in the web. Now, this was the lesson of understanding the food chain for today. That's all for today students. I would see you soon in our next lesson. Till then, have fun learning. Take care. Thank you for watching ITTV and bye.